Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. More landscape. The Squirrel Stone Circle. Rick Steves, Europe. I see him on local television, and he's on NPR, like, radio sometimes, and I never heard him or saw him before until watching these videos, and so it was cool to see, like, uh, he has, like, a radio show for, I think, like, based in Boston, which is not far from me. Yeah, I'll react oh, to that, sure. Will. Thanks, sorry, that's my other video. I was getting ready. Hope you guys are doing well. The original link to the video from Rick Steves Europe, top of the description, preemptive like. My name's Connor, if you're new, hope you're doing well. Let's go. Squirrel Stone Circle. Is hundreds. I have been to Stonehenge. Of the hundred. I wish I could have gotten closer, but it was still cool. Hundreds of Neolithic ruins that dot the Dartmoor landscape. The Squirrel Stone Circle is my favorite. Tranquil and nearly forgotten, erected some four thousand years ago by mysterious people for mysterious reasons. It's yours alone, the way a stone circle should be. It's just you and your imagination. You can Enjoy the quiet. Ponder the 40 centuries of people who've made this enchanting landscape their home and the wisdom of today's English to protect it and keep it pristine. For a more tangible look at the spiritual mystery of this countryside, prehistoric stone circles are scattered all across Britain. These circles, many as old as Egypt's pyramids, were sacred centers of ritual and worship. They functioned as celestial calendars. These ones are so, I understand how Stonehenge survived. I mean, it, you'd have to like put in some effort to, to not, wow, that was a bad voice crack, to knock down Stonehenge. But stuff like this, I'm, I'm sort of surprised it survived. Because I, I figured maybe like a, a new kind of religion or, you know, pagan religion might come up and see these, these as like sacrilege of a older something. I, I don't know. I... 5,000 years ago, locals could tell when to plant and when to party according to where the sun rose and where the sun set. So it's like a giant calendar. It still works that way today. At the Avebury Stone Circle, you're free to wander among a hundred stones. Visitors ponder the cohesive ensemble of ditches, mounds, and megaliths, the work of people clearly on a mission from thousands of years ago. The huge circle, while cut in two by a busy road and so big it contains a village, retains its allure and wonder. Busy road and so big... Really nice house. It contains a village, retains its allure and wonder. And nearby stands Silbury Hill, a yet to be explained man-made mountain of chalk. For more than 4,000 years, this largest man-made construction from prehistoric Europe is just another edifice from England's mysterious and ancient religious landscape. And exactly what's it all mean? We'll never know for sure. It's like looking at the ruins of a medieval church Aliens. from that no, alone joking. trying to understand Christianity. Interesting Stonehenge right? is the most famous of Britain's stone circles. If Rick, of his yep, I remember being here in this building here. Um, I think S Stonehenge is like over this way. No. What was I going to say? Oh, Rick Steves, if he gets to get, like, special access, like, close to the uh, Stonehenge, I'm going to be jealous. As it starts at the museum, where you'll see artifacts from the Stone Age people who built it. A 360-degree theater demonstrates how the structure is aligned with the heavens, marking both the longest and the shortest days of the year. And outside, a thatched hut hamlet helps you imagine how its Neolithic builders once lived. Huge stones like this replica were quarried, carved, and then moved for many miles, some of them from as far away as Wales, 200 miles to the west. They barged them down rivers. They may have rolled them on logs like this. Nobody knows for sure. What, what uh, rivers would they have used, like, between the quarry site and Wales? And, um, 
Isn't there a river that exits near uh, Bristol into the Irish Sea? Or... Uh, all right. How do you get it on... Okay. After this introduction, a bus shuttles you to the site. Visitors are in awe as they ponder the continuously debated purposes and meaning of Stonehenge. The major stones were erected at the end of the Stone Age, just before the advent of metal tools. It's amazing to think that some of these cross stones have been in place for four and a half thousand years. Whatever its original purpose, Stonehenge still functions as a celestial calendar, even in modern. Guys, they have like plugs under them and they connect sort of like Legos, I think. I, like, I don't think it's just the, the sheer weight of the block holding in place. I think there are sort of like a hole in knob. Modern times, the sun rises that... on the longest day of the You're... year in just the right spot and it retains its powerful sense of wonder over those who gather. For over 4,000 years in a row, this ensemble of stones, so artfully assembled, has silently done its duty. When you're visiting a site like this, like a lot of people, if you don't appreciate or know what you're looking at, it's gonna be like, well, that's a, it's just a bunch of rot, like, when you're going to something like this, I think you need to put yourself in, like, in the space and know how long ago it was built and like the fact that it's sort of a mystery on of how they, they built it and got the stones over here. Whole different experience. Scotland is littered with reminders of prehistoric people from an even earlier age. At Clava Cairns, three Bronze Age burial chambers date from about 4,000 years ago. Each was once buried under turf-covered mounds and surrounded by a stone circle. The central ring cairn has an open space in its middle. The two passage cairns each have an entrance shaft that, on the winter solstice, lines up with the setting sun. Visitors are caught up in the peaceful wonder of this ancient and sacred site. Enjoy the mystery of this place. Were these stone circles part of a celestial calendar? Was the soul of the deceased transported into the next life when the sun was just right? Nobody really knows. Hadrian's Wall was built by the Romans during the reign of Emperor Hadrian nearly 2,000 years ago. This is one of England's most thought-provoking sites and much loved by hikers. This great stone wall stretched 73 miles from coast to coast across the narrowest part of Northern England. This was more than just a wall. It was a cleverly designed military rampart manned by 20,000 troops. At every mile along the wall, a small fort guarded a gate. Its actual purpose is still debated. The wall, which often takes advantage of natural contours in the land, likely defined the northern edge of the empire and helped defend Roman Britain to the south from pesky, hard-to-conquer barbarians to the north. Today's modern border between Scotland and England still runs pretty close to this ancient wall. A particularly well-preserved segment of the wall leads to Housestead's Roman fort. Roman forts you would had a standard design a rectangular Art. shape containing a commander's headquarters and barracks. There's little more than stone foundations remaining. These stones raised a floor to give stored grain ventilation. And this was once a set of Spartan barracks. Pondering these desolate ruins, I can imagine the bleakness of being a young Roman soldier stationed here 18 centuries ago. It's really cool. You know, the Roman Empire being so powerful, and I, I'm assuming they knew the extent of the rest of of the British Isles. I'm assuming maybe they like sailed around it or something. Um, and so that makes me wonder why they didn't just continue, which makes me think that there was a pretty formidable 
large number of natives up there that were just not worth trying to conquer. Um, and and was this the most northern reaches of of the uh, the entire Roman Empire? It has to be. Very interesting. Hope you guys are all doing well. Would appreciate any comments down below, and hopefully I'll see you next video. Bye, guys.